Good day, good day, and welcome to another episode of Kiwi Car Life. And a number of months back, I reviewed a very tidy version 3 WRX STI. And ever since then, all the Mitzi fanboys on the channel have been saying, when are you gonna review an Evo? When are you gonna review an Evo? When's the Evo 6 review coming? When's the Evo 2 review coming? And here it is. Now, in terms of exterior style, I'm gonna start off by saying that I have not really been a huge fan of Mitsubishis. I work for Honda, I've driven a lot of Hondas, and we trade an awful lot of Mitsubishis, you know, Mirages and base model Lancers and so on, and we just kind of write them off as just being old Mitsubishis. But the Evo 10 is quite different, and I still remember playing Need for Speed Pro Street back in the day, and the arch rival that you had to beat at the very end of the game was driving an Evo 10. And steering at the back end of this car back in 2008 or whenever it was, it was a fantastic looking car. One of Mitsubishi's more timeless designs. And seeing one in the flesh today, I think it looks fantastic. This one is naturally lowered on some very nice work wheels and in this beautiful red paint job, it just has such a striking appearance. The engine under the bonnet of the Evo 10 is the 4B 11T. It's a two litre turbocharged four cylinder engine and this particular one thanks to the modifications that's been done to it is now making around 240 wheel kilowatt and 420 wheel newton meters to all four wheels naturally as this is kind of a homologation rally car in a way. The transmission options for this car was a five speed manual or in the case of this a six speed SST they call it or in other words a six speed dual clutch transmission. The interior of of the Evo 10 is interesting. The exterior looks fantastic, but the interior, I mean, above all else, it's basically just a Mitsubishi Lancer. However, they did change a few things to make it just a little bit nicer in here. It has a new shift knob with a nice sort of leather boot and they sort of present the dual clutch element of it quite nicely. The steering wheel is a nice smooth leather and while it doesn't look like anything special, at least it feels nice and solid. The column mounted paddle shifters feel really good actually. It's a surprising part about a lot of Mitsubishi interiors where you look at the rest of it, it's all just cheap plastic. And then they have these really nice metal paddles. It's very interesting. And then the gauges look really cool as well. Nice and clear, show all of the information that you need to see with a nice sort of red backlit theme. The rest of the interior, however, there's a bit of plastic going on in the inside of here. It's far from a stellar interior experience, but I'll give it that the seats are excellent, the steering wheel is excellent, the shift knob assembly down here feels really nice, and the gauges are good. So the areas that are important look nice. The rest of it though, like I said, it's just the Mitsubishi Lancer. But one good part about it is that with it having four doors, it is very practical. Driving the Evo 10. I'm going to be honest, when I was told this had a 2 litre turbo and had four doors and was a dual clutch, I expected it to be fairly similar to, say, a Mark V Golf GTI, and I was just filming with one the other day. So with that memory fresh in my mind, I got into this and was shocked to find that this is nothing like a Golf GTI. The closest thing I can compare this to is the Caldina GT4 that I drove that was tuned but of course this is dual clutch, so there's a direct connection between the engine and the wheels, and it rides rock solid. The transmission shifts so hard, and the performance, as you're about to see, is <laughs> stellar to say the least. The Golfs and the Volkswagen Group cars, when they shift, there is a gap in the throttle. You can tell it's lifting the throttle off and then coming back on the power again. This just keeps going and it lurches you into the next gear. Oh my, oh my, this is fast. <laughs> the steering is immediate. Literally, you turn the wheel and the car just darts one way or another. This is some of the most quick steering I think I've ever experienced in any car and of course the rock solid suspension and really skinny tyres helps with that because there's nothing to really slow it down. Whatever you do with the steering wheel, it moves in that direction. I guess my only slight complaint would be that it doesn't have a lot of feeling. It's a very light steering rack so even though it's really quick, I don't actually really know what the car's doing up the front there. But I've got to say, 
I've been pretty surprised with the performance of this dual clutch. Like, it's not as refined as the ones that you get in the GTIs. It's really just lurchy and jerky and just bangs you about really, but it shifts quick. And even though having one of these with a manual would be nice, the fact is a five-speed manual in like 2008 when these cars came out, mate, that's old technology, man. <laughs> but putting a six-speed dual clutch on it, definitely changes things quite a lot. And it does mean that you can kind of cruise around in this thing and daily drive it if you want. But then if you want the performance, mate, it can certainly do it. But my oh my, I think one of the most incredible parts about this car has just got to be that off the line acceleration. Just check this out. Oh, that got to 100 so fast. Oh, I think I might be a Mitsubishi fan now, man. <laughs> This is insane. If you just want a car that drives balls to the walls and is just no mucking about, you know, like here's an example here, look at this. I'll put it in fourth gear, so not really any of the power. Going the same speed as this Corolla, foot down, it hits boost. Look at how quickly we just disappear past that car. Or like this car here, here we go. Put it in third, foot down. Goodbye. Mate, I am more than impressed. It's proven to me that once upon a time, Mitsubishi, even if they didn't know how to build an interior, look at all these panel gaps here. Everything's all wavy and uneven. It just looks terrible. But putting the interior aside, in every other regard, oh my goodness. This is a special, special car. So there we go. I really enjoyed this. This is a fantastic car. And I will very much look forward to seeing you again next time.